new discoveries are waiting out there. What new adventures can we see? What are the answers to the never-ending questions in your brain that's in a race to find the reason or the place from deep on Earth to outer space so that the truth of any case can be unfurled in the real world? Science in the real world. Hi, I'm Kirsten. Welcome to Real World Science. What's the weather outside your window today? Is it raining? Is it hot? Maybe it's snowing. Is there a light breeze or is the wind blowing hard? What will the weather be like tomorrow? You may not know, but you can be sure the weather will most likely change. That's because weather is the short-term conditions found in the Earth's atmosphere. All places or regions on Earth have a particular weather pattern. A weather pattern that takes place over a specific area is called climate. Let's talk about climate. Different types of climates. We've all seen and experienced weather when it changes quickly. In a matter of a few minutes, gray clouds can roll in, bringing rain and thunderstorms. If the temperature drops quickly, rain can change to sleet and blanket the ground with ice. No matter where we live, we depend on meteorologists to predict how the weather will change. Meteorologists are scientists who study weather and weather patterns. Weather changes quickly, but a weather pattern or climate in any one region can take millions of years to change. A weather pattern that takes place over a specific area is called climate. There are many different types of climates found on Earth. We all live in a climate. Scientists have broken down the world's climates into three main types. The polar climate is found at the extreme north and south of the Earth, also known as the polar zones. Polar zones have a cold climate with long winters. Because of their location, polar zones receive no direct sunlight. Polar climates are very, very cold, windy, and snowy. Despite the harsh conditions, many types of animals and plants have adapted to life in the polar climate. Polar bears and emperor penguins are just a few of the animals that can survive in a polar climate. There are also many types of plants such as dwarf shrubs, lichens, and mosses that grow in the polar climates. The plants are usually very small and grow close to the ground. A tropical climate is located just north and south of the equator, known as the tropical zone. The tropical zone is hot and doesn't have winter. Because of its location, tropical zones receive the direct sunlight all year long. Regions of the world with a tropical climate have hot temperatures all year long. Many tropical areas have humid and wet environments. There are more species of plants found in tropical climates than anywhere else on the Earth. There are also a wide variety of animals, both large and small, that live in a tropical climate. Between the polar zone and tropical zone is the temperate zone. The temperate zone experiences a wide range of temperatures because the amount of sunlight it receives is determined by the season. A temperate climate can have warm summers and cool winters. Temperate climate zones have four distinct seasons. Spring, summer, winter, and fall. The temperate climate zone is home to many types of plants and animals. 
Did you know that most humans live in temperate climates? It's true. The Four Seasons As you know, the sun is part of our solar system. It provides the Earth with light and heat energy and therefore controls the weather and the four seasons on the Earth. The Earth orbits the Sun. It takes the Earth 365 and one quarter days, or one year, to complete its orbit. In one year, the seasons and the weather change many times. The four seasons are summer, spring, winter, and autumn or fall. To understand how it works, you have to know a little bit more about the Earth. At the top of the Earth is the North Pole, and the bottom of the Earth is the South Pole. There is an imaginary line called the axis that goes through the North Pole through the Earth to the South Pole. The Earth spins or rotates on its axis. In the middle of the Earth, there is another imaginary line called the equator. The equator divides the Earth into two halves called the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. The equator is always facing the Sun directly. This is why places around the equator never get very cold. The further away from the equator you get, the colder it gets. The Earth is tilted about 23.5 degrees. It is this tilt that causes the seasons. When the North Pole is tilted toward the Sun, it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere of the Earth. When the South Pole is tilted toward the Sun, it's summer in the Southern Hemisphere, and winter in the Northern Hemisphere. When the North Pole is tilted toward the Sun, it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere of the Earth. It takes in more sunlight. With more light, the days are longer and the weather is warmer. It's summer. At the same time, the South Pole is tilted away from the sun. The Southern Hemisphere receives less sun. With less sun, the days become shorter and weather is colder. It's winter. There are two in-between seasons too. Between the seasons of winter and summer is spring. The spring is a time for plants to grow. The temperatures are warmer than winter, and it's wetter. Between summer and winter is autumn. In autumn, leaves fall off the trees. Daylight gets shorter, and temperatures are cooler than summer. When it's spring in the northern hemisphere, it's autumn in the southern hemisphere, and vice versa. What makes climate? Okay, so what makes a climate? Well, there are several factors. The climate of any location is affected by its latitude, terrain, and altitude, as well as nearby water bodies. The first factor we'll look at is latitude. An area's climate is affected by latitude. Latitude is the distance north or south from the equator. Places closest to the equator have a warmer climate than places further away. Climate is also affected by the terrain of a location. Terrain refers to the land surface, landforms, and elevation. Elevation is how high or low the land is above sea level. Higher elevations, such as mountains, affect climate. The most obvious effect is on temperature. The air's temperature decreases or gets colder the higher you go. Higher elevations also have an effect on climate by changing the patterns of wind circulation and precipitation, which is the amount of rain or snow. The relationship between land and water also affects climate. Water covers almost three-quarters of the Earth's surface 
and stores tremendous amounts of energy in the form of heat. Large bodies of water also have a large resistance to temperature change. This means that oceans and other large bodies of water heat and cool more slowly than land. Therefore, land regions that are near large bodies of water don't experience extreme changes in temperatures. So having a large body of water nearby, such as an ocean or large lake, makes winters warmer and summers cooler. This factor can also make an area of land wetter because there is more moisture in the air. There are some exceptions. For example, the coasts of Southern California and the Arctic coastline of Alaska are dry. There are many natural forces that impact climate change too. Two of those factors include the sun and the tilt of the earth. As the earth revolves around the sun, the earth's tilt causes parts of the earth to be closer to the sun. The regions of the earth that are closer to the sun experience summer. The regions that are farther from the sun experience winter. Changing climates. Scientists who study climate are called climatologists. Climatology is the long-term study of how climates are created and how they impact the environment. Unlike weather that can change very quickly, climates can sometimes take millions of years to undergo a large permanent change. For example, if all the trees in the rainforest were cut down, the temperature would get hotter because it would take hundreds of years to grow back. There would be long-term climate change. Sometimes short-term climate changes can occur. For example, El Nino. El Nino is a warm ocean current that flows along the equator in the Pacific Ocean. It occurs about every five years. El Nino causes increases in the rainfall on the west coast of North America during the winter time. It causes a short-term variation in a local climate. It's important to note that climate changes in even remote areas like the Arctic can affect people all over the world. For example, warmer temperatures would impact the Arctic's climate as ice melt. The melting ice could affect ocean temperatures, which in turn could impact the climate in every corner of the Earth. People can affect climate changes too by what they do every day. Many people burn fossil fuels like oil to power their cars and trucks and heat their homes. Some people in businesses burn coal for energy. This type of activity contributes to global warming and global warming impacts climate change everywhere. It doesn't matter where you live on Earth. Climate has an effect on just about everything we do. The foods we eat, how we dress, and even the kind of house we live in. The way we live depends on climate in the real world.